Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to Nostalgia Unboxing. Today we are back to doing Transformers, but with one little catch here. So instead of doing Kingdom like I've been doing, I've gotten something a little different, but for a very, very big reason. Almost, one could even call it Titan-sized reason. <laughs> but we'll get to that later. So here in this box we have... Transformers Black Rorichi from, I believe, the Generations line? But, uh, of course, we'll be able to double-check that as soon as we get him out of the box here. And, yes, you may not have heard of this figure at all, <laughs> because it is quite uh, obscure and unknown in the West, to say the least, because he is a character from, I believe, one of the Japanese exclusive series, from the 80s, and I don't think he's been present in many other of the franchise's things, but he is still a very well-known character, as well as the, the, I guess, character that he serves. I'm also personally not quite familiar with it all, but it is kind of an interesting concept, and there's a very good reason why I got this figure here, and why I'm doing this video now, as opposed to putting it off and all that other fun stuff. So actually, here, let's see what we got here. Ooh, we had a little card here. So I, I did buy this off of uh, BigBadToyStore.com instead of Amazon and whatnot like I usually do. But of course, there will be links as to where I got it from in the description and, you know, everywhere else like usual. I paid about 30 bucks for it. Hopefully, it doesn't sell out because, again, there is a big reason why I got this. And that may cause demand for this figure to go up. Despite its relative obscurity. Is this thing double boxed? <laughs> Incredible. What the heck? <laughs> Alright then. This is a really nice box. What the heck? Here we go. Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy. And I can't really make out what that is supposed to be. Huh. We have a giant Autobot logo here. This is a really, really nice box. Wow, and you know you're getting old when you start getting excited about, like, getting a really good box as opposed to whatever the product is inside. Here we go. Let's try to get this thing open then. Oh, that felt so good. That was so nice and smooth. I don't know why I keep folding this up. I'm going to need it once again. And, oh, what the heck? That's interesting. I did not expect this. This is definitely a first. What an interesting box. I wonder if it's because this is part of the Generation Selects line, maybe? And that's why it comes in this really interesting, like, fully cardboard chipping box or something. That's so bizarre. But here we, we have all the plastic and stuff in there. And as we can see, we have Black Rarichi himself with his nice gold color palette. And thankfully, uh, we can... Pretty much rest assured that Eve, despite this being painted, you know, with the nice gold plastic, it shouldn't suffer from gold plastic syndrome because I believe Hasbro has figured out uh, quite a while ago, actually, what the actual problem was that caused this. So from as far as I think we're aware, the last figure, the last known figure currently to have suffered from uh, gold plastic syndrome is the, uh, what do they call it, Protoform Starscream from the Revenge of the Fallen movie, I think, which was came out like 15 years ago. So hopefully, this shouldn't have a problem. And let's try to pop it out. Wow, this packaging is so different from what I'm used to. There's like, you know, no nice pictures or anything to look at, even though the box itself is really, really nice. Is it only held in by those two? Huh, let me bring this up closer to me. Sorry about that. I would definitely prefer to get this out in one piece without any sort of uh, accidental breakages. Ooh, you guys can hear those nice pops. Real kind of apologize for not being able to get this on camera as well, but again, my, my filming position is a little bit different than uh, it was traditionally. There we go, maybe this will help. And it has been, you know, traditionally that I traditionally use just because of, uh, you know, the surgery that I had pretty recently. So, I must make little, little changes here and there. Oh, did I forget to do his R? Oh, I, oh, ugh, I'm so dumb. I forgot to get his arm 
Okay, that was really close to cutting me. There we go. And, ah, gotta get the other side too. This is why I usually do not show me actually cutting these <laughs> on, on video usually. And I just, you know, do a nice jump cut. But I figured since the box is a little lacking, we could squeeze it in. So we go a little bit, a little loose here already, I can feel, but no matter. Ah, this little pistol thing didn't come out. Oh, wait, no, this one wasn't attached. It's a very interesting packaging, like, plasticking design, I guess. Keeping some things in his actual hands and other things in their own little separate crevasse. So, while I'm doing this, I guess I should add, I, cause I, I, I feel like I might not have said this already, but I paid about $30 for this, uh, not including shipping, but shipping I don't think was too bad, and it came very fast, so I'm really, really surprised, it only took like two days or something for it to actually arrive. Oh, look, I like his guns actually, they're really neat, so there's the peg that it goes in and it goes like completely over his fist. That makes his uh, his little gun, er, his little actual fists into like little gun hands. I think that might also be part of the transformation <laughs> or something. So ah ah, here's another thing. So he is, I think, partially a parts former, and we'll see hopefully what that means as we kind of continue. And what is this? Just a little blade. Does this go anywhere for store? Oh, I guess you can just kind of slot it in anywhere for storage. And you could probably remove, I guess, one of these guns. Put these somewhere actually yeah let's do this oh actually ah -ha, ha i can see it right here let's see we also have the uh, the famous paper of words as always but here we go on the instruction booklet you can see one of his little guns is actually on his shoulder so i guess we could do this uh oh it don't want to come out ah you got no arm <laughs> this is uh this is Holy crap, it is it is really in there. And I wish some of these other joints were as tight as that was. Crikey. Here we go. There we go. So it goes not where did I Ah I'm losing everything. Uh-oh. Ah! I forgot I plugged it into the back. I thought the sword has lost the infinite void there for a second. So there we go. He has this little like dagger thing, I guess. And for robot mode, it's looking pretty simple, you know, he's got pretty good rotation everywhere, although a bit loose, which is contrary to kind of what a lot of the Beast Wars, the new Beast Wars figures from Kingdom that I've been opening up at, where I've been saying that they're pretty tight. So that's a little different. He's got the, the elbows, wrist rotation. The head is only on a swivel, it looks like, but let's see if I can, how close I can get it here. The sculpt itself is simple, but it looks pretty cool. Again, I'm not too familiar with uh, what this, the background of this character uh, in the actual, you know, media, the show and stuff was. And I don't think, I think, I feel like most people in the West are probably not too familiar with him. There we go, we got his little back stuff. And he's pretty simple here, right? Kind of unassuming. So he's also a triple changer, which is the thing. So, which is kind of why he parts for him. So he does have the robot mode, a vehicle mode, and a spear mode. And from what I've read, the spear actually can fit Titan class figures, which is pretty cool. And we'll see that later. So yeah, that is about robot mode, it, about it for robot mode. Let's try to go into vehicle mode then with a nice little jump cut. And we are back here to him transformed in his vehicle mode. Unfortunately, as maybe you can see, I did have to use the instructions a little bit and to kind of confirm my kind of fear. I was really hoping that his vehicle transformation wouldn't involve the parts forming and the parts forming would only be for turning him into the weapon. But alas, that was not the case and there is a bit of parts forming involved. Actually, quite a bit of parts forming involved in uh, transforming him into this mode. So it was a little bit confusing first time. I did have to look up the instructions just to see how stuff kind of fit. Because it's, you know, it's, it doesn't flow as logically uh, with parts formers usually, for me at least, uh, compared to just regular normal transformations. It becomes less obvious where things fold and where things should go. But in the end, we arrive at this little weird Cybertronian thing? Uh, tank? 
rover thing. It almost, from its design, it actually almost kind of reminds me of a, like, a bigger, more complex version of Megatron's Minicon from Transformers Armada called Leader One. Which, uh, I actually have it somewhere, but nowhere near me on hand, so I cannot actually show it for example. But if you look it up, you can kind of see a little bit of the similarities with how the cockpit is kind of shaped, and the two blasters almost, the two, you know, I guess, cannon things. And he does have this, so this is where it shows in the instructions that you could store his little blade thing. It's just kind of, you know, chilling on his shoulder. But there's also another function it has. And you, you may notice there are like peg holes all over the place. Uh, I guess you can, you know, you can kind of mix and match and combine a lot of these parts formers together for interesting upgrades and whatnot. And one of the things you can do with him, is, with this piece, is I believe, yeah, you flip it like this, and you shove it into the back of his head here. And when it is in this orientation, uh, from what I understand, from what it showed in the instructions, you can actually fit one of the little headmaster robots sitting down. And it'll somehow clip in, I guess, and kind of, you know, sit here right here so you can make it look like the little headmaster is piloting the big tank, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I really wish I could show that off right now, but it is just too difficult for me to go dig out one from, you know, away in my collection. But yeah, I mean, it does roll a little bit. Obviously, being a little... Oh, there's no plastic here. Being a little furry, you know, carpety surface, it is not going to roll as well as on a hard floor. But you can still hear even the wheels kind of turning. It's got the uh, the standard Cybertronian six-wheel drive from a Cyber Troyota dealerships. I like the little back. It almost reminds me of like an Optimus Prime kind of chest here with like the whole truck grill and then the, the two windshields. But it's somehow the, the butt of the machine, I guess. Also, there's ways that you can remove the turret and unfold. It's probably not. There we go. And you can unfold like this stuff. It shows in the... Uh, let's see if I can get it out. It looks like it's kind of kind of stuck in there, but you can fold this out and connect it to the Earthrise like base modes and stuff to a lot of the other. Man, this does not want to come out for some reason. How? Wait, maybe if I can do something here to. Nope. Well, just believe me, this kind of folds out and back like that, and then you can put it back onto the tank just like it was, and it can connect to a lot of like the bridges that are on some of the Earthrise like fort, the base mode transformers. So there's a little bit of play value there, which is, yeah, you know, kind of interesting, I guess, but I, if you could do it, you could do it, and it's kind of cool, you know, but if you don't, I don't think it impacts the figure too much. I do like the mode though, and I do like the coloring a lot. So next we'll jump mode to, uh, we'll jump cut to spear mode. We return to him in spear mode, and unfortunately, you don't use this piece, which kind of surprised me. But fortunately, I've discovered that there's actually another mode in the instructions that you can put him in besides the spear mode, which is this sort of, like, back cannon attachment mode that is demonstrated here on Decepticon Exhaust, which is pretty crazy. Here is he is modeling the spear as well, and just look how gigantic it is compared to him. And... Here's how gigantic it is in real life. This thing is absolutely massive and will definitely fit a Titan class figure for sure. But uh, one caveat is it's a wee bit flimsy because you use his arms for this part. So everything kind of bends in really weird ways. Oh, you're actually we could flip this like that. And it kind of bends up like a little scorpion or something. I don't know. It's just slightly flimsy. But it looks freaking awesome! Like, dude, this thing is probably like a foot long, at least, or just about. This thing is freaking massive, look. It looks like a sizable dagger even in my own hands. Look how it dwarfs little Gerber here. <laughs> then you got the little, finally, a good use for the little tip here, the sword. This is freaking cool. And I suppose I should do a quick jump cut and just make the back launcher thing as well. So, be right back. And we once again return to his final kind of combiner parts forming transformation here with this whole backpack turret thing. And I actually found out this time they did come up with a use for the leftover part. And that this ends up becoming a little shield that you can give to, you know, whoever you're equipping this to. Here's the little handle that you could use. And it's a little cool kite shield, which I think looks really, really cool. Like, this is really nifty. And even if you 
don't like the kite shield for whatever reason, you still can fit it in into the back of the the backpack here. Right here, there's a little peg, and you can peg it in like that, or you can, you know, you could do whatever you want. There's a bunch of different ways that you could probably fiddle with it to make it work, whatever suits your needs. And I'm sure it also varies depending on what transformer you want to equip it to, because obviously it'll have a different way of connecting. So you gotta kind of work around that. You know, you could, for example, actually wait, no, you can't split this. Yeah, never mind. I was thinking you could split this in half and then use these two pegs to plug it in like that, but that'll not work as long as this is plugged in because of the nature of how that works. But it's just really interesting, and like, look how freaking huge it is. I didn't even know about, like, this kind of mechanic. This is really, really cool. And they also fold and stuff on... Oh, he actually... So he actually does have, um, ankle swivels, ankle hinges that I didn't mention in, uh, robot mode. But you can see them real nice here as they work in the turret mode. And yeah, I mean, it also has, like, joints everywhere, so you could flip these around to and bend them just to get around to different bots. This is overall really, really cool, and, and I, I really like this Transformer now a lot more than... I mean, I, I thought he looked cool already because I do love the color scheme. I'm a big fan of this kind of, like, gold color and the blue and everything like that, and purple, of course. I think it's a really cool color combo. But I actually do enjoy this Transformer now a lot. These are some really fun little gimmicks that it can do, and it's you know, pretty exciting. But the most exciting thing is the reason why I specifically got Black Rarici here. This weird kind of obscure character. And that is because about a week ago from when this should be going live, Hasbro announced that they were making a Titan class Black Zorak figure using the Scorponok mold. Most of the Titan class Scor Scorponok mode. There will be a little bit of changes to the Headmaster and stuff. But this is a pretty big deal for a lot of Transformers collectors like myself because so this guy Black Rarici in the lore is actually like he serves Black Zorak and is kind of like a minor villain to the greater evil here and Black Zorak unfortunately has only had one toy released previously and it was back in I believe 1988 when the original Japanese like super Force or whatever. I'm not sure exactly what it was called, but the, uh, it was a Japanese Transformers show cartoon that never, I don't think it ever came dubbed to the States, but that was what Black Zorak featured in. And that's around the time that they released the figure using, and it was again, same as now with the new Black Zorak being a retool of the new Titan class Scorponok mode. Back then, their, uh, the original Black Zorak toy is a retool of the original Scorponok mode. But the problem was, it suffers from gold plastic syndrome very, very bad. Because, again, just like um, you see Black Arichi has gold, Black Sorak also has gold accents on black on his as his color palette. And I have, I've seen even personal pictures of, like, these toys coming to shops and stuff. And, I mean, even a broken one still has value to collectors if it's in the box and stuff just because of the presentation. But... It is not a toy that you could really display, that you can fiddle with at all. It falls apart to frickin' dust. And for the price that it'll cost you, it is not even worth trying usually. Although I do think some frickin' hero had one, and he risked posing it and stuff to get really nice quality images for the Black Zorak original Transformer images that are on the Transformers wiki. So, you know, that guy is a freaking champion because I'm pretty sure he said that after he finished getting those nice pictures, it did end up starting to fall apart. So, you know, thumbs up, man. If you, if you end up seeing this, you were, you were fighting the good fight for the greater fandom here. <laughs> that is, that is some A plus, A plus stuff there. <laughs> and so I wanted to bring this up and make this video with Black Arichi now, pretty soon after the Hasbro announced it, because the Titan class Black Zorak is up for pre-order now on Hasbro Pulse. I will have links for it again in the description and in the comments for you guys to check out, hopefully while it's still available. I went and pre-ordered it the second that I saw someone post that the pre-orders were up. I think it cost me like 160 bucks or so to pre-order. But one thing do, uh, a warning kind of to keep in mind, from what I'm aware, they will not charge you the full price now. They will, I think, deduct like a, a reservation fee currently, but the brunt of the price of the transformer won't come out of your account until it gets released which i think it gets released 
either this June or next June. Don't quote me on that, but it will definitely be on the site. But I only say that so that no one goes in going, you know, I have the money right now. I could do this. Gets it. And then, you know, in a few months time when the figure finally releases, suddenly their bank account goes into the negative because they get hit with the unexpected charge. So I want to look out for you guys and say, just be careful if you do do that and keep that in mind. But so yeah, grab the pre-orders while you can, if they're hopefully still up by the time this video goes up. So that is why we did this Black Ricci from Transformers Generations, I guess, Select, instead of doing a Kingdom figure this time around. And I'm really excited for Black Zorak. So count on that video coming out whenever mine, I guess, ships to me <laughs> in the not too distant future, I hope. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you did, please do like, comment, and subscribe because that helps the channel out tremendously. And if you do want to catch more of these videos, you should tune in on Wednesday evenings because that is when I tend to upload. But if you ring the bell, you know, YouTube will give you that notification for you. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. So yeah, thank you guys so much and have an awesome day. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>